Hello and welcome to Nathan's Garage. I'm Nathan Kershaw and say hello to Silver. Now this is a surprise, a completely unplanned surprise, which I actually think is going to turn into Wife Tastic's barn truck. But for now, we can still have a little bit of fun with it. A little bit of history. A local neighbour couldn't get it through smog. Uh, and with a little bit of my magic and trickery, I was able to do it. So it's fully owned, insured, licensed, tagged, and everything it needs to be. I've had it a few weeks. It's absolutely awesome. I am fully on the LS Swap the World train because the engine's great and you can get parts for them anywhere super cheap. Let's have a look around. One thing that Chevy did not bestow upon this truck was paint that stuck. So when I actually got this, this entire hood was just bare metal. It had all gone. But I had to spray it quick because I've got neighbors and wife Tastic who wants the truck socially acceptable. But we're going to be working our way around slowly. The whole hood looked like that. And that is from when I put paint on, um, not paint, tape. And that's from the tape, and that's from the tape, and that's from just paint falling off. Literally, when I was trying to get the monitors to set, I was doing about 80 on the freeway and the paint was just peeling off the hood. It was hilarious. But I'll throw a video up of how I did that. I used the new big um, Rust-Oleum Turbo jobby spray can thingy. It was really good. Bit of overspray. What can I say? It got done quick. So it's an extended cab or whatever this kind of cab's called with the suicide doors. Huxley is not impressed with how low he is and how much he can't see through that window. And the fact that that window doesn't open as well, only just, you know, opens a little bit. And as you can see, plenty of uh, king size sea foam and cataclean, which really, really helped in the smog process. It's like 112,000 miles. And look at the interior. It's awesome. I really, really like the thing. Great tires. Next thing I'm going to be doing is cleaning the old girl. Uh, it's got a fancy stereo, which I don't know anything about. It's got a fancy towing thing down there, which I don't know anything about. Mm, what else? Oh, the big LS in the front. Look at that beauty. So it's the 4.8. Volvo Yoda says it has about 280 horsepower, which doesn't make it move very quick, but it sounds glorious. So I actually changed those one-way check valves. Um, which, again, could have helped in the smog process. Bike. Um, and it actually came with this k and air filter. Look at that. Because race truck, as we know, with an EO number. So it's actually legal in California, which is just very alien to me. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, came with bed liner and cobalt bed box. It's pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie, really, really do like this truck, but it's definitely time to give her a clean. And a clean she did have, but rather unspectacular for cleaning processes. Ammo NYC or whatever that cleaning channel is, it's amazing. I am not. Now, the main reason why this truck seems to have happened upon me, I didn't happen to this truck, it fell into my lap was to increase my ability to make bad choices. A tow hitch it does have. Any kind of transmission cooling or anything like that, it does not, and it has a 4L60E, which is a fine transmission, but a little finicky, doesn't like heat, doesn't like power, doesn't like a ton of torque being put through it. So the best way to combat that is to keep the fluid nice and cool. This, Dural, whatever, I think it's an 8000, yes, 8000 series. Transmission cooler seemed to be about the best price-ish situation, so got one. There's an adapter here, that has a load of hose in it, I'm gonna need some more. There's an adapter here for the radiator where the transmission cooler line goes in. Uh, genuine oil filter, love genuine oil filters. Uh, trim tool for the front new uh, remote pressy button thing because it can't be asked with the key and the old one seems to be really really finicky i've uh, got some 2k lacquer so when i do a bit more of the painting i can seal it up and that's it for now oh no actually i've got a really cool thing so dural do this like kind of very very cool transmission pan cooler type situation 
where it's deep and it has kind of these cooling clear tubes that go through the center that shouldn't be blocked up. <laughs> now, they're like 250 and then you can get on Amazon for about 180 plus tax. This gentleman had this on a lowered Camaro and put a hole in it. So I thought this was aluminum and it was gonna be a JB weld situation, but it's not, it's steel. So I'm gonna throw some proper weld on it and then that's gonna go in. So it's gonna be an increased volume and cooling tubes as well. So another part of the Save the 4L60E project. Transmission cooler is gonna live behind there. First of all, take this trim piece off. That tool, pull the center up and then you can hook the rest of it up and it comes out like that. Then you have those things that were like a half push turn situation and then some more there, half push turn with a Phillips head screwdriver. So I just checked uh, clearances with the grill on and we can run this like basically all the way out here. We don't have to like, you know, vacuum it or suck it onto this front bracket, um, you know, uptight because we have an absolute ton of room so we can run it quite far kind of proud obviously it's gonna be that side but proud of the actual latch itself as you can see i'm not too bothered about symmetry there was already a hole there so i thought let's use it so as i say slightly over to one side it's just got an l bracket on the bottom and an l bracket on that bottom as well a lot of guys use self tappers which is completely fine i just like nuts and bolts so i'm just going to do another bracket off to that side because it's fine but obviously it's wobbly there we'll do a bracket here and i think that's going to be okay don't know if i go all ocd i'll do another bracket to the other side as well don't you love it when the box section you've been pulling your angles off is exactly the right length so all the cross hatching is going to get chopped off hole there that's going to be for the cooler and that's going to go onto the cross member bracketry is all done and three mounts is plenty this is absolutely solid on both sides so all done a little cockeyed but it's in there so now we're going to run the hoses so transmission lines come into the radiator, so we're gonna run it out of the radiator and through this before it goes back to transmission. So it'll, as I say, the transmission fluid goes into the radiator first, then through this, then back to transmission. So we're gonna run the lines that way. From there, we're gonna tap into this top one because um, it goes in through the bottom, up there, and then back to transmission. So we're gonna tap into this line. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna remove this kill me clip in there, I'm gonna substitute this for another piece and then we're gonna put the hose onto this. It'll all make sense. That's the one that's the return, which is going to that hose, which did go to there. And then we have this fitting, which is held in with the same clip. And that is Hayden 397, got it off, um, I assume Amazon, um, which the other hose now, from the other side of the cooler, is gonna go onto. Okay, don't really need to secure any of the hoses because they're all kind of helped, pinched or trapped. So this one kind of goes in there, that kind of area. Now I've got this K&N air filter on, so it may be unique, I don't know. But anyway, that goes in the top. This one that goes around the bottom actually feeds underneath the air filter box. Now that side right there loops around and then goes onto that fitting there that goes that is um coming out of the radiator so this is out of the radiator back to the truck now well, it's taking so much longer than i thought before i put that top cover on you can see coolers right there and you have acres of room to fit it that is all the way and then the hoses go around there but yeah, tons and tons and tons of room. Now that I've given this a bit of a clean up, you can see what it's about. So these are like air tubes that go within the transmission fluid in the pan, which I think is an amazing idea. And this was local, and instead of being 250 normally and then 170 on Amazon, it was 30 to me. 
because we have a hole right there. And he's taken whacking great hit. This front end's come down slightly, so we'll hit that back flat. Um, and then I think I'm gonna throw some weld there. These have been brazed in. I'm gonna throw some weld there, and I think a thin skim of JB all across this bottom edge. And a couple of cracks. One there, it's like two or three cracks, that's all gonna get. It's a dollop of JB. So what, 10 bucks of JB and a bit of welding? Let's hope uh, it's as good as new. It's been laboriously cleaned and wire wheeled and now just brake clean it, non chlorinated of course. So let's throw some heat at it and see how it goes. So. Nice. There you can see where it's really thin. Awesome. So basically, what I did, um, <coughs> welded onto corners and stuff where it's a bit thicker and you've got two layers to go at until it blew through and then I can weld back onto my own bead which is thicker and build back up to this right angle which will be strong. I think she is a good one. It's a skim of um, JB now right? Excellent and then you can see on the inside where it's all the way through. So I thought you guys might like to come along on this JB Weld journey. That's what we've done so far, covered the, the weld and then just kind of like skimmed further along. It's actually taking less than I thought, so this is literally the dregs of tubes that I've had left over. So, I mean, none of this is leaking, so I'm just trying to do a thin skim, if you know what I mean. If it dries overnight tonight, then you can do transmission filter and new fluid tomorrow. with that. I'm pretty happy with that. There we go. That's where it was welded. And then just put a skim across the front edge all the way along. Okay, pan filter is on and repairs have been effected. Did a little bit of, just a little bit of a skim of black permatex on the sump gasket with the sump plug. On the Volvos we use that for face fit which is like a anaerobic sealant so as soon as it tines down it doesn't get any air it goes really sticky and I thought it'll be a good way to hold at least the bottom half of this gasket in place the ATF is running down onto the top so this is a rubber gasket so I'm assuming the gasket is going to be good enough itself the pan obviously taking some hits seems pretty flat uh, and luckily the holes on the rubber gasket hold the bolts up so it can offer it up and then put the screws in. The eagle-eyed among you will realize that this is not on the truck. And I am here to inform you, the original is. Because this bugger wouldn't go on with the exhaust crossover pipe in place. I tried to undo a couple of bolts on the downpipes to manifolds and they were very, very tight. And I was not in the mood to snap anything last night because my quality Faraba hate 
torque wrench kind of jammed and I nearly snapped a bolt off in the pan. So everything just got dumped and I ran in the house screaming for my sanity. So there you go. That's in, that's on. I'm gonna torque it up, oil filter on, fill her up, and I think fire her up. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is it for this one. The oil is in of both RFI and she is very happy, obviously, because I feel like I've changed four of the 12 quarts of transmission fluid in the truck. I feel like it's shifting like it's never shifted before. But I guess that's just me. So, everything's cool. Oil and filter done. Transmission, fluid and filter done. <clears throat> Next, I wouldn't mind actually getting some raised spindles on it it's got a bit of a stink bug stance. So that's gonna be in the list of things to do. Uh, cleaning up some of the tow hitch wiring. I'm halfway through doing that. And flushing out the brake fluid because it's completely black. Apart from that, everything is damned perfect. All right, thank you so much for watching. I have been Nathan Kershaw. This has been Nathan's Garage. See you next time.